So welcome to the wonderful world of playlists. Everything that you see on the track in terms of the waveforms, like, oh, it's audio. Yes, it is. But what's actually happening is a list of instructions, like this audio file and this audio file and this audio file, or clips as they're technically known. These live on a hard drive. Me arranging them in the order that they're in here in this area of my edit window, I made a list of what to play back from the hard drive. Right? They're just audio files that live on hard drives at this point in time. Right? The continuity of them is me putting them in order and telling Pro Tools, play it in this order. And that is technically known as a playlist. This, this area of the track is known as a playlist area. This is your track, like your track is this thing, like with the name, the solo and record buttons and the input and output selectors and the inserts and whatnot, that's your track. Notice this little tiny arrow upside down again, it means menu. This is actually something known as the playlist selector for this track. Every audio track in Pro Tools has an unlimited number of playlists in the background. Playlists are alternate record takes or alternate edits that live on the same track, but they're not playing back currently. The only thing that plays back is what's on the currently on the current main playlist, what you see on the on the track playlist itself. But using this button here, I can come to this track and say, you know what? I want to keep on recording piano, but I want I don't want to record on top of what's already there, and I don't want to lose what's already there. So I'm going to click on the playlist selector. And notice that the name that it has at the bottom of this menu is the name of the track. That's the dirty secret. The track name is the playlist name in Pro Tools. They're one in the same. Like the name of the track is the name of the playlist on that track. Right, so it's called Piani, and it's checked because that's the one I'm currently viewing. And it's also the only one in the track. Like it, when you don't do these on purpose, you only have one playlist. The name of the track is that playlist. But at the top, of this menu, you have a new button. So when I click new, it will first pop up a little dialog window saying, what do you want to call this new playlist? Because it can't be called piano or piani, because there's already a playlist with that name. So I'll call this uh, piano two. So it's different. And I hit OK. And you're like, <gasps> everything disappeared. Well, no, it didn't actually disappear. It just got changed because notice now the name of the track is Piano 2, that alternate playlist. And this button is now blue. Because I have now created multiple playlists on this track, that's an indicator letting you know there's stuff in the background. Launch them by clicking on the playlist selector, and then now you have an option. You can see this playlist or this playlist, and you can switch between them. The Piani playlist is exactly the way it was left. But now I have a brand new blank playlist that I can do whatever I want on without affecting the original playlist and the information. So I can come in here and say, let's try some different things. So, okay, let's just kind of roll with this. And like, oh, maybe that'll work a little bit better. You know, I kind of like that. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. You know what? Who cares? Let's do another new playlist. We'll just keep on doing new things to new playlists. And I'll call this Piano 3 at this point in time. Another new playlist. And what it does is it moves the previous playlist to the background. You can always recall them and switch between them. But you're basically keeping all the elements of the track the same, the inputs, the outputs, the record enable status and, and everything the plugins that, that might be living on there if there are any everything stays the same but now you just cleared up the tape itself and you're like you got a blank now tape track so we're like all right let's do this again i can keep on doing this take after take and instead of recording on top of the previous take i can record to new playlist every single time so that way we can kind of keep a running list of everything that's been recorded. And what a lot of people use this for is for composites or a comp, as we call it. A composite is a piecing together of multiple takes into a new take that was never done that way before. 
one way I could accomplish this is by playlists. So I can go through and record 50 playlists, 60, 70, 80, 100. There's an unlimited number of playlists per audio track in Pro Tools. So that's kind of groovy. But I can create another new one and say, okay, new. And we'll call this Piano Comp. Brand new blank playlist. Nothing on it. Right. <clears throat> and what I can do now is go back to my previous playlist and, and say, you know what? I kind of like what you did here. So I'm going to select it. And I'm going to use the standard copy command from the edit menu. Just command C or control C to copy. Cool. I copied what's selected. And now I'm going to switch playlists to my piano comp. Notice my selection doesn't move. It's exactly where it was originally in time, just on a different playlist. And now I can just hit paste. Bam. I just pasted that to this playlist. And I can keep on kind of doing this and say, all right, you know what? I like this part of take of piano three. So I'm going to copy it and paste it over here. And then I'm going to go back to piano e, and I like what I did over here. I'm going to select that with my selector tool, hit command C to copy, and then flip my playlist and then hit paste. So I'm compositing different takes into one new take on a new playlist that doesn't interfere with any of the other playlists. So switching playlists manually like this is definitely kind of how everything started. But kind of to further this along a little bit, what you can do is you can actually look at all the playlists simultaneously. So that way you can see kind of an overall of everything. In your Pro Tools track, like the main track area where your, your track name and your solo and mute buttons are and whatnot, below the solo, mute, and record enable buttons, there's a button that says waveform on an audio track. This is actually known as a track view selector. What are you viewing on that track? By default, you're looking at the audio waveforms. You can do a track view of playlists. It will actually open up the track. Notice it kind of branches off the main track here in blue. And every background playlist that you have on that track is now visible. So you have the main track playlist, which is called Piano Comp. But in the background, but now totally visible, Piani, Piano 2, Piano 3. So you can actually see them all instead of having to constantly flip back and forth using the menu. Each of these background playlists has a solo button. Right? This little S means solo. So I can hit the solo button, and now it forces this background playlist to be playing out of the main output of the track. So I can hear it. Or solo this one. Right? This lets me audition the playlist in time in the session and in place in time in the session. So this way I can actually hear it if I have drum tracks and guitar tracks, I can hear it in context with everything else. And the, the solo button, like I said, of the background playlist overrides the main track playlist momentarily right, until you deactivate it. And you can use this as a way to edit. I can make selections here, right? And I can say, okay, just play that selected area. Cool. Or maybe this selected area. And if I decide that, you know what? I like this. I wish this was part of the comp at the top. Well, whenever you have a selection on a background playlist, this little up arrow lights up next to the solo button on that individual playlist. This is a copy and paste to main playlist. On the fly, it doesn't cut anything out. It just literally copies it and instantly just moves it to the main playlist at the top. So we can create a composite by doing just this and not having to flip things back and forth. We, hear, we can hear everything individually by soloing, individually soloing each of the playlists and having them play back with everything else. And now I've put together a composite using pieces of different playlists, different takes, and to what would be my final take or my, my main.